Okay, so now we're in the second section of lead generation. This is where it gets very interesting. So essentially this section is all about your website's ability to get leads and attract inquiries on your website. So essentially your website needs to be a salesperson and it needs to best represent your company just like a normal, like if you hired a salesperson, you would hope that they would represent your business in the best way. Same with your website. Okay. The beautiful thing about a website is that you don't need to feed it, you don't need to pay it. It doesn't go on sick leave. Well, if it gets a virus or it gets hacked, <laughs> then uh, then it goes on sick leave. But we won't we won't talk about that. You won't get any gripes. You won't have any um, any issues on a personal level. Essentially, your website needs to be working for you. Okay, and if it's not, then you need to make some changes to make it work for you. Okay, and it's actually not that hard to do. Uh, you just need to really think about stuff and, and actually implement it. So in this section, I'm going to go through three different things that you can do to improve the lead generation on your website. So let's get cracking, shall we? So the first one is going to be having effective website copy on your website. Uh, second one is going to be call to action. So add calls to action on your website. And then the third one is trust factors. Okay, so we'll go through each one of these in more detail now. So the first one is effective website copy. All right, so in summary, this is essentially having the copy written. So the, when I say copy, it's the text that visually appears on your website. Now, I want you to imagine that you go to a website and you're looking for a painter to come and paint your house, okay? And you go to this website and the first thing you see when you land on the website is like, we are the best painters in the world. You know, that's, the, that's their headline, right? And then under that, then it just, it just, you know, then there's a video or something of the owner saying like, I am so great. I'm the best painter. I'm just so, so cool. You're going to love my jobs. And yeah, just, just ring me and, you know, it will work straight away. Now that might work for some people, but you know, in general cases, that's a really big put off. Okay. People would be like, this guy's so up himself. I'm not going to use him. Okay. So essentially then what if you went to a different website after that and it had like a headline or something like that to, that really spoke to you as the target market. Okay. And it said something like, we make your house look a million dollars. Okay. Something like that. Or, um, Imagine what your house would look like with a new lick of fresh paint or something like that. And then under that it says, call us now to find out how. Now, again, that's probably not the best examples, but you can see the difference, right? It's not about the company. It's not about the painter. It's about the target market and what they are wanting. So I'm now going to show you a, an example from a popular website. Here it is. It's coming up on the screen. So the first point here is to speak directly to your target market. So the copy on your website has to speak directly to your target market. And only you know what your target market is. So you need to identify their pain points and you need to speak to those pain points um, and put them into a, a positive spin or you can use negative as well. I like to use positive. Anyway, the example that you see on the screen here is, is from a company called WP Engine. They're a premium WordPress hosting solution provider. They're really good. I just gave them some sort of testimonial then, didn't I? Yeah. Okay, so um, as you can see here, the text. So if you go and see the, their website now, this is the very first thing you see, all right? And it says, your WordPress digital experience platform is the main thing. And then under that, it says, bring your imagination, skills, and vision to life and break through digital experiences. Now, that's pretty awesome, right? That speaks directly to their target market right there. And it just says what it is without actually saying how great they are, you know? Because it's not about the company or the service provider. It's about does the service provider solve my problem, okay? And uh, how does that best communicate it? So WP Engine have done really well here. But again, you don't see anything like, you know, we are the best website host company in the world for your WordPress website, you know? Like, use us today, you know? It's nothing like that. Or it's like, you know, we have the best 100 gigabytes of space and all this technical analysis um, junk that people don't really care about. They just want to know, is your host good? And you know, what will it provide for me? What will it do for me? What's in it for me? That's that, the whole Wiffen thing that you've probably heard a lot about. But um, so very straight to the point, speaks to their target market, okay? And there's also a clear call to action under that, get started. Or if uh, somebody's just, just still sussing them out, then 
they can click on the YWP engine to find out more. Okay, the second one is communicate the benefits of your product or service and how better your customer's life will be after they use your product or service. This screenshot you're seeing is from another popular uh, service called Evernote, which is a cloud storage for notes and all sorts of stuff. It's actually a really cool tool. I use it a lot and you can access documents from all across different devices and it's, it's just really amazing. But again, the copy isn't about how great they are as a company, like saying, oh, Evernote, yeah, you, we're, the, we're the best cloud storage solution in the world. Again, it's not about Evernote, it's about their target market. As you can see here, it's got remember everything, work smarter, bring it all together, and then they've got a little sub explain of um, sections under that to show why they should, you know, what what's the benefits? You know, it's like organize your work and declutter your life. Like it's not about, you know, we organize your work and declutter people's lives. It's no, you can do that and it's easy. So it, it really speaks very clearly to what they do and what they offer. And then you can click on the little fancy little green video buttons there and it pops up, up a video and explains more about that specific section, which is really cool. So it's very interactive and you notice there's a lot of white space, it's not filled with a lot of junk. And of course your business is probably gonna be a little bit different. But anyway, just have a look around the web and have a look at your website and get inspired because there's a lot of great inspiration sites out there, okay? And okay, the final screenshot that I've got here is FAQs, okay? And they are a must. You must have a FAQ section on your website because they serve two beasts, right? The first one is that they, they save you and your prospect a stack load of time, okay? So if you can put all your common questions that you get asked on your website, then it's going to uh, reduce a lot of friction later down the line. And it also helps to build trust because you know what you're talking about and you've got the most common questions there. So FAQs are amazing and I, I really encourage you to get them on your site. Alrighty, so moving on to the next section, which is number five, calls to action. Okay, so this adds on to your copy and these could be sections on the website as well. And you would have seen these on a lot of popular websites as well. And we'll go through these. Uh, there's a couple of examples here that I've got. So 40 hours of PPC analysis, uh, pay-per-click analysis, get your free report today. So that's the call to action. So there's, if you click on that button, there's probably a form that will appear and then we'll ask for your name and your email, possibly a phone number, and then they'll send, send a free report. And then the one underneath that, send email your customers can't ignore. Again, the copy is about the target market. It's not about how great they are, okay? And then try it for free, which then is obviously to entice the user to log in and create an account and uh, start using the email marketing software. So a lot of these calls to actions are like for free signups or for downloads or for um, maybe perhaps signing up to a newsletter. Okay, so another uh, popular call to action is one that pops up when you come to a e-commerce site. So there's one you can see here is they're giving a $20 off coupon in exchange for your details. So this invariably works or it doesn't, but uh, when it does, at least you've got the, the, the data and the email, you can start building an email list and then start pr promoting your products and services to that list, which is wonderful. So first order subscribe pop-ups, they're really cool. Uh, and or other pop-ups that you might see when you go to websites. And that leads into the last section, which is the last point here, which is an exit intent pop-up. So you may have noticed that when you go to exit a website, there's a pop-up that appears in hope that you will stay and do something or take action in some way. Uh, it's the last effort to try and keep you and uh, to keep you motivated to stay on the site. So there's a couple of examples, they're the most common. So use course action on your website. And I'm not talking about, you know, like really major course actions. They could be really simple, like give us a phone call, you know, call us today with the number or sign up or download or uh, another one that I see if you're a consultant, um, you might uh, want to give away a 15 minute free consultation something like that. If you're a lawyer, and you might be giving away a free one hour consultation. So you might have a, a call to action on there that says get your free one hour consultation, something like that. And then that leads them to a form, they fill it out and you ring them and, and then that begins the, the sales process. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the last section in this uh, area in the lead generation, which is trust factors, okay? So trust factors go hand in hand with calls to action and also the copy of your website. So you could have the greatest cause to action, you could have the greatest copy on the website, 
But if you don't have trust factors, then it's probably going to fall over because this just completes it. Okay, so this completes the, 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 the circle. So let me show you what I mean by trust factors. So testimonials and client logos, okay? So if you go to a website and it's all about the company and how great they are, then you're gonna leave and you're gonna think that they're, they're just not gonna help me. It's a, they're just so stuck up themselves. But if you go to a website and they've got testimonials and, and video testimonials, which are really great, and if they've got uh, you know popular logos or recognizable logos that, that you know with the clients that they worked with, that builds a lot of trust. You know, subconsciously you think, well, these guys are must know what they're they're talking about because they've got trust logos they've got client logos they've got people saying how great they are if they've got videos and that's even better because you can watch the video and see how great they are um, and again it's not the business saying how great they are it's the clients saying how great they are which is perfect <laughs> so so get testimonials on your website Okay, so the next point that I've got here is adding an explainer or an intro video to your website. So these are really, really powerful. So again, it comes back to the premise of that your website is a salesperson, needs to best represent you. If you have a video of yourself or one of your team members talking about, again, how you uh, solve the problems of your prospects, then it's wonderful. Like it's, you know, it could save a phone call, it could save a, um, you know, a whole process of, of sales, of building trust. And so you could be sleeping at, at 12 o'clock at night and people could be coming to your website and clicking on the video and they can actually meet you there and then, get to know you. Uh, and then in the morning when you wake up, there's a a message or a, or they, they might call you because they already know who you are and what you do and how you can help solve their problem. So videos are really, really powerful and you should definitely use them for your website. Okay, so for the last point, security badges or logos. Uh, so as you can see on this screenshot, if you put, uh, say, Norton and McAfee Secure on there, then people will trust your website uh, even more. Uh, you can even put these on general websites. But these are you know, specific to e-commerce websites where people are paying something online or whether they're paying something through your website, it builds trust, okay? So subconsciously, people recognize those logos as being secure and so then they trust you even more, okay? So having trust factors on your website is really, really important. Okay, so just to recap on what this uh, this overall lead generation section is, is, so you essentially need to have effective copy on your website, speak directly to your target market. You need to have a call to action or calls to action that tell people what you want them to do. And also you need to add trust factors like testimonials, testimonial videos, client logos, and uh, also, if you've been in the media, put media logos as well, like the as seen in. So hopefully that's helped and uh, we'll move on to the next section.